The Bitcoin halving is about to begin and we have to be strapped in for the volatility that we are going to enjoy thoroughly over the next few weeks. I'm going to be giving you, of course, a trader's perspective. If you want to learn about the halving itself, there's going to be 101 different news sites that are dissecting every single part of that. My job here is to bring you over to the charts, the technical analysis, and how we can absolutely crush these markets and make one hell of a lot of profit. If that sounds good to you, you know where to be. Here with me on the charts as we're going over a potential very big short squeeze that we could be about to be seeing. So I hope that sounds fun to you. Sounds very fun to me. Let's get cookie. Let's get into the charts, what we love. And I want to start off by really very briefly dissecting the past few days here. We've, of course, made our way down to the range low support zone. Well, I made it very clear. You do not look for shorts <laughs> at the range low. This is an area where you look for longs. Why? Because if you start to short down here, you are lining yourself up for that very big short squeeze indeed. So as a post in the Champions Group from the 17th, so two days ago now, really could easily get this short squeeze going. There were so many short trades opening, so many bears. Everywhere you look, it was just bearishness, bearishness, bearishness. Uh, people were really angry at me for even thinking, oh my God, Daniel's long, you are incorrect. The price is going to drop. Well, here we are. I have managed to secure some very nice longs. I'll explain these trades of more of the lower term time frame perspective first. So, of course, we made our way down to the overall range low. What actually had we have got, had gone on here over the past few days is more of a mini range within the range, right? So I was waiting for the overall range low, which was $58,000. But as you all know, I have reworked my mindset over the past you know week, let's say, of understanding I need to be more focused on the lower term time frames. I'm missing some really good opportunities. So let's go back to business. Let's get down on these lower term time frames and let's start to absolutely crush these scopes once more. And so for me, it was simple. We came down, we filled the wick on Bitcoin. We ended with some trapped shorts below the low when we look at the order flow. And for me, that is enough to say we have filled the wick. We've got a swing failure pattern. We've got trapped shorts in the swing failure pattern. It is a long trade. We obviously made our way up over the next day or so, and we made our way up to a daily level of resistance. This is where we had a daily level of resistance. We ended up getting a CC retest here, another CC retest on the daily before a very big drop to the downside. And again, being focused on these lower term timeframes, we're able to secure longs from filling the wick on the swing failure patterns to then moving that into a short trade upon hitting into the daily, ending with a fake out, and you actually had trapped longs into the high <laughs> okay so i was saying saying here you yeah, then have lots of longs trapped into the high very important how that hourly closes we ended up closing with a fake out above of course naturally very nice short trade to be taken so it's a simple case of look for longs at the lows look for shorts up at the highs lock in your take profits we had that take profit one at the vwap that we were waiting for we hit the vwap actually hit into that VWAP, bounced all the way back up to the daily, got the retest of the daily, got a full rejection once more down to that range low for the swing failure pattern. It has been a crazy few days here. And I must admit, it, it feels good to be back on these lower term time frames. This is the volatility that we love, right? This is what we live for as traders. So what is next? Okay, you know, you, know, you saw me talk about this potential short squeeze. But there's one thing that I want to make very important. I'm going to slow down a little bit here. Maybe I'm getting a bit overexcited for you. Um, let me just slow this down and make something very clear to you all. We are traders. We have to align ourselves to put ourselves in a position where when we reach areas of support, we look for long trades. If price bounces up and we hit resistance and reject, we need to position ourselves to take short trades. So we look for longs at support and shorts at resistance. If we get to a resistance and we break through and flip to support, well, that is then a understanding we will move up to the next level to the upside. Just as with support, we look for longs at support. But if we lose support and flip it to resistance, then we would have to be looking for our next level to the downside and thus a drop, right? So it's this understanding of level to level trading and being prepared and happy to take longs, just as we will be happy to take shorts. Shorts at the resistance, longs at support, right? So 
I'm going to be presenting you with something that's very important. Of course, I'm going to be talking through a short squeeze scenario, something that I've been talking about for the last few days in my group, and I really do feel that there is a nice potential. It requires a few steps, though, which I will talk you through here. But just as we are absolutely prepared and actually positioned for a long squeeze, I am too very much aware that this could reverse. We could get a large drop from here. If we are not prepared for a large drop, we're going to be like a deer in the headlights when that happens. So my job is to prepare for a long trade, prepare for a short trade, take the trade, which is the highest probability at the time. Okay, so we only ever want to be in a well, unless you get a long at support and a short at resistance, at one level, you don't take, you know, a gamble long here, short here, and just see what works out. No, you have to wait patiently, for example, at this point for the rise, for the short or the long off of a drop. Okay. And you basically are just waiting for these high probability trades, but we are absolutely aware of two upcoming trades, longs and shorts and happy to trade either way. Okay. I hope that makes full sense. <laughs> if it doesn't, maybe rewatch a little bit or just study our content heavily, because it will make sense very quickly. This is how we trade. And it's very important you understand as I'm about to go into the next segment. So back over to the charts. What is the next segment? Well, I'll start off by talking you through this short squeeze. So what makes me feel this short squeeze is, you know, absolutely real? Well, first of all, so many bears, as I mentioned, I've, I've been talking about long trades and attacks, 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 you know, there's so many bears about. And with that, we are seeing shorts opening at support. And so when you're at this range low, of course, we never took out $58,000, but we did, you know, bounce around this range low zone. It's dangerous to be shorting there, right? It's absolutely dangerous to be shorting there. And so, yes, that lines us up for a short squeeze. So what do we need to see for that to really come to fruition and start to get a real bounce? First of all, um, we need to change this market structure. So you can see here, overall, right, we have that overall all-time high ending in a lower high that was made, which was our triangle fake out. From there, we can see lower high, lower high, of course, within here, the low, then we got our lower high, we got our lower low, we got our lower high, we got our lower low, we got our lower high, and we got our new series of lower lows here. So we are in a downtrend. What do we need then to reverse this and start to have a high probability that the short squeeze is fully underway? We really need to get above this last lower high, right? So within this lower highs and lower lows, lower highs and lower lows, we are potentially going to activate some short of a squeeze here. But we would like to take out this last lower high, right? And what I think you'll find lovely here is the confluence that that has. You know how much I love to use the fixed range volume profile? Because when we actually take this with the confluence view here, we have the range point of control sat right on that lower high. So this is such a massive key level. Why? Because if we can get the reclaim of this level, okay, again, it might not happen today. I am prepared for another drop. But let's say we, over the next few days, get the reclaim. Whether there's a drop first or not, I will explain. But let's say that we make our way up and we get the reclaim of this level. Then there's a very high probability that we will make our way up to at least the value area high where we can do the same thought process. Do we get the reclaim or rejection? If we get the reclaim, we continue to all-time highs. So we have, in my opinion, three important levels. First, the last lower high on the range point of control. Then $69,000, where you actually have a weekly naked point of control. Okay, so you have some nice confluence around there. In terms of the weekly naked point of control, you have, you'll have your CC Fibonacci from high to low around here too. And especially you can, of course, take it up to the all-time high. So all-time high down to the low sits top of that around $69,000. You have the weekly naked point of control in there too. So this is what I would be thinking to myself in terms of it was the old all time high when you look back to 2021, the top of the CC weekly naked point of control. For me, this is a level where I'm taking into the context here of single prints or an inefficiency. That is one factor that would make me hold back and why you would only have the alert set there. 
then you would move on to the value area high and of course all time highs above that. So there is a few key levels here, but I think we can agree. Feels like the biggest is around $67,000, lower high point of control, very, very big level. Because just as we know the bullish scenario, as I said at the start around this video, right? You have your area of interest for the short and the long. What is this? This is an area of a short interest. Why? Because that is our next resistance. I've just given you a plan where we can get to all time highs, but that does require to flip that resistance into support. Why? Because if we just simply make our way up here and we get a clean rejection, well, then we do absolutely have these short trades. And that is where we can look to take that back down potentially to value area low. And if we lose that back down to new lows, right? So it's a position where we are putting ourselves in of we have the next level of resistance marked out. Again, I maybe need to calm down a little bit. I get overly excited. I love what I do. But we have our next area of resistance, right? And that is our next area where we would look for short trades. If we flip that into support, we can look for continuation and this short squeeze idea becomes more and more and more likely for every level that we flip along the way. On the contrary, we are in a downtrend. This is still a series of lower highs and lower lows. So we cannot get overly excited with a short squeeze while well, this is the case. There's no reason why we cannot make our way down and make another lower low, especially when we look at things such as the stock market. I think the stock market is very key. Okay, this is a, it is a highly correlated market. Look at the stocks. This is clearly making lower lows and a series of lower highs. This is a massive downtrend. So what I like about the stock market now, right, there's been a few levels on the way down, but now we have taken out 5,000 psychological level. Okay, it's always nice to take that layer of liquidity. There will have been stops resting down here. Problem that you have in the stock market, of course, is, well, you could call it a problem. You could call it a blessing. It depends on your perspective. But let's say the problem for now is that there is not a lot of support built here. So if this loses 5,000, of course, it can just continue down and down and down. That is not going to be good news for Bitcoin. But if we can have took this 5,000 liquidity, get some strength, change the market structure. Hey, I've been trading the stock market for a long time. <laughs> Let me tell you, this thing can absolutely short squeeze. <laughs> it is not favorable to be a bear in the stock market. Let's just say that. Overall, historically, hey, you, you print when you're a bull. I am a bull of the stock market. I have printed a lot. Let's just say that. But I am aware locally, not too much support. Would like to see the market structure change. That can absolutely help a Bitcoin if the stocks get underway and start to actually get a bounce. If it doesn't, yeah, we can expect another lower high to come in. And that's just something that we need to be aware of, right? So for me, you know, you, I, I want you to truly understand my perspectives here. Absolutely. When we look at the monthly profiles, monthly strong uptrends, you can be higher term time frame, say, yeah, there's a very high likelihood that we're going to new all time highs. As you come down on lower term time frames, that's where you can start to understand, OK, there are short trade opportunities to be had. And that is the mistake, obviously, I made a few weeks ago, not shorting the fake out of the triangle because I was so focused on those higher term time frames. I've brought myself down back onto the lower term time frames, which makes a lot of people very happy indeed. I'm back looking for those scope long opportunities, looking for those scope short opportunities. We're making profits once more and understanding the game of probabilities here. Next, what I'm looking at really simply is, of course, that short is close, right? We made our way all the way back down through a swing fair pattern of the low. Of course, I'm out of that short. But nevertheless, what we're looking at is a very nice potential of the next short trade, which is that point of control on the highs of the 15th of April. Again, if we flip that into support, no short to be had, and we can look for continuation and really a very nice short squeeze. Okay. Alternatively, we get a rejection or a lower high, and then we'll make our way down happily for a value area low test, which if holds, great. If it doesn't, we can, there's no reason not to be looking back down at $58,000, right? Again, if we lose $58,000, no reason why we can't be seeing sub 50,000. It's as simple as that. You know, my mindset has shifted over the past few days. I've really analyzed 
some mistakes that I made in my trades, you know, and I feel very positive and confident over, you know, what's to come. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be analyzing these charts, setting myself up for high probability trades, putting myself in a position where I'm happy to see a large drop. Hey, if we see a large drop to $50,000, that for me is just another massive opportunity. OK, and I'm happy to see a short squeeze to all time highs. Again, opportunity, volatility, trades to be had, profits to be made. Please, if there's one thing, if there's one thing that you can take from this video is that you need to be prepared for both sides. If you are only a perma bull looking for upside, well, then you are going to get devastated on a drop. Just as so, if you are a perma bear looking to short everything, well, I think you've already missed out on the majority of the bull run. And that's one thing that, you know, kind of is funny. Of course, I mentioned um, towards the start of the video that, you know, I've been bullish over the past you know, half a year. And, you know, when I say about bullish scenarios, bears attack, attack, attack the bears, right? They're, they're very much aggressive. But one thing that I remind myself is that we are overall in a bull market. I've successfully traded from 30,000 to 75,000, still in my long trades from 30K, right? No reason to close that at all. And, you know, the bears will absolutely love to celebrate this local drop to the downsides. And eventually they'll get it right. But they've also been shorting 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. They finally got a winning trade. They're out in celebrations, but they've missed the whole of the bull market. That's not what you want to get into. You don't want to get yourself into this celebration when you finally get a trade right. We're after consistent gains, profitability every single month, that PL going up and up and up and up and up and up, right? That's what we're after. So what I want to say finally there is do not be a perma bull. Do not be a perma bear. Trade the charts, the highest probabilities. That is opening yourself up to longs, opening yourself up to shorts. Understand the invalidations of those trades. And really simply relax. Enjoy every step of the way. I will tell you that. That's what I'm back to doing. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. And I am happy to see this market move in either way. Thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And that's me signing out. If you want to see more from me, you know where to get it. Chartchampions.com. So you got the whole educational library, daily live stream updates, even the evening updates with the Asian hours. Now too, we've got you covered, the live trading, everything that you need. Everything that you need is here. Of course, I will say this for my final words. We are focused on the educational side of trading. We want to teach you how to boost yourself up to become a self-sufficient trader. That is our aim. That is our mission. We are not a signals group. Okay. We, of course, are sharing trades and sharing ideas, but that is for the educational purpose. I hope that you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much. And that's me signing out. I will see you all maybe in one or two weeks on YouTube because I'm going to be very busy. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see me actively, then you know where to get it, chartchampions.com. Thank you ever so much. And for you guys on YouTube, see you in a few weeks. Thank you and goodbye.